welcome back, folks. I want to talk uh, again uh, a little bit further with my friend Con Buzianis, um about uh, some of his life skills and the things that he's learned. But I have a topic that's always enthralled me, and the topic is growth under diversity. What happens when you are you, you still want to evolve and you want to grow and you want to learn and you want to educate yourself to being better, but things are happening around you that are stopping you doing that. I want to talk about what mental strength and what energy that takes. Now, I have a philosophy that you generally cope better with stress when you sleep well and you eat well. That's a pretty logical sort of a statement. But a lot of people talk about it but don't actually do it. So, you know, the old rule of having one hour sleep before 12 is equivalent to two hours after 12. I think that mantra for me holds pretty true. I notice that when I go to bed a bit earlier that I actually feel a bit better the next day and I'm a bit more sort of game on. So growth under diversity, Con, is what I want to talk about. Yeah. And I know that uh, you've always been on a quest of learning, etc. So when things, you know, have been really bad for you or, you know, there was some bad press or whatever it might be, yeah. you know, that, that one spark, and I know I've mentioned it a few times in, in, these, in these discussions today, is, is that, you know, I'm still looking for, you know, we spoke about it before, but, you know, would there be, is there someone that always motivates you other than yourself? Is there there's something that, you know, when when things have been bad for you and you've had a little bit of pressure, yeah. but you're still wanting to evolve, what's the thing that doesn't let, doesn't sit you back on your ass and go, I'm giving up or I'm taking taking off for a while? What's the thing that keeps keeps driving you? Because you are a persistent individual. Like, you're one of the most persistent people I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you do it politely. You're not pushy about it. You're, yeah. po- you, you're politely persistent. There, are PP will call you. Yeah, yeah. well, look, it's... It's, it's not an easy question, <laughs> really, because sometimes you don't even realise um, how to get yourself out of those situations, you know. I, I want to grow. I keep on hitting a, a brick wall because what I'm trying to do is change people's beliefs, you know. And well, you're trying to change a real culture in football, though. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a tough one, you know, yeah. like a real yeah. tough one. I, I'm talking to a number of people, they just don't get it sometimes. So what do you do with that? What happens when that happens? Well, I have to go to the next person. Right. Okay. So next do, do you have a, you know, how long do you give it with one? Do you wait till you get complete rejection or do you move on before rejection comes no, in? No, I'm too well versed for it now. I'm already moving on before. Right. They okay. may say one word to me and I'm off. Right. So you already, so you know. And that's where I, I believe, yeah. and one of my early, my first episode I did was that intuition is based on experience. So 100%. In, yeah. Intuitively, what happens is that as you grow, Right, and as you experience more things, your intuition's always peaking. So if you say you're picking it on one word, you know that they're already not on. That's a great thing. That's a great skill set to have, because therefore, because the most valuable thing you have is time. Yeah. Right. So therefore, you already know that at the start of a conversation, whether well, that conversation's got any life in it. That's right. What a great skill set. Well, it only took me 15 years to get there. <laughs> <laughs> a great skill set. That yeah. is a great skill set to have. Very important. But yeah, yeah, uh, growth and diversity. One good friend of mine always said, Con, sometimes it's good to start off with someone who's like an empty vessel. Yeah. You want an empty vessel. So you can fill that vessel up from the start and, and make it correct from the start. So some people come with a, you know, a, a full vessel and they know what's going on and they think they know and they don't know. And you're, they're, always, they're always in conflict with you because they believe they know better. But they've never, they've never had any results themselves. You're telling me about how you want to get there and you've never been there. Where you're going, I've taken every single step. And, and potholes, we're not talking about one hole, big holes coming back again. Holes coming back, big mistakes. Well, you, you know what I find about you? One of the, aside from you and I being mates, yeah. one of the things that's impressed me is that I always consider you a hungry man, not a starving man. Yeah. Right. So having and what I mean by that is this is, is that it's very hard to teach a starving man how to fossick for food because all he's interested in is eating right then and there. Yes. Right. But a hungry man who isn't starving is generally got a, you've got a thirst. You're hungry to learn and to evolve. So therefore, you're always on that mantra. But if you were destitute, things would be very different. So there is a, I have a, a belief that I would always employ someone who is hungry instead of someone who is starving. That doesn't mean I don't feel for the, the starving person. Yeah. It means that having somebody who is hungry is generally easier to educate. 100%. And that's why kids and that 
on their way up in the sport of soccer are good. And that's why in relation to employing people, I generally will employ someone who's hungry. That doesn't mean that their bum's hanging out of their pants. It just means that they have an absolute thirst to want to get ahead. So I find hungry is good, starving is bad. That's right. You know, yeah. And I find that you, but you've always been hungry. And that's what I admire about you, you know? Well, you know, you have to get up. You're right. You have to get up in the morning. I'm still exercising. Like my knee's not the best as it was because I've lost a lot of cartilage. So um, I'm not running as much, but I'm swimming, I'm bike riding more. So you're compensating with other things? I'm compensating with other things. But you know what? It's very important that you look after yourself. The moment I walk into the room, the energy's strong. Yeah. You've got to watch what you eat. Yeah. As you get older, it gets a little bit harder. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. and you you can feel that energy in a person. I know a lot of people who do this game, you know, and they walk in and, they, you know, they're completely overweight. There's no disrespect, but that's reality. Yeah. Like sometimes you can be walking into a room and you could smell. I mean, we can do yeah. And I'm just saying, mate, you need to put something on because you – and that's being nice because I want you to do well. Yeah. But you being caring, but sometimes you can be a bit critical, but you need to be critical. I'm not here to love you. Like I said to your son, your son, I said two words to him. I'm not your friend first. <laughs> yeah. I'm your coach first yeah. and I'm your friend second. I remember that. And yeah. we're great friends now because yeah. we've got a mutual respect. Yes. And then there's another thing that's very important. All the kids that I've taught that do the full-time program, when I say full-time program, they're not with me all the time. They're documenting the most important, and I'll say it into the camera, they're documenting every single thing they do with me. Their grades in school are unbelievable because they're disciplined in the area of their sport, which makes them disciplined in the area of their life, which makes them disciplined in the area of their studies. Yeah. They study well, yeah. they do their sport well, they don't have time to get mixed up with other things. Well, it affects all, because if you have that sort of mantra, yes. then it carries on to all the different other aspects of your life. Yes. So, you know, I always say with your goals, you need business goals, financial goals, and personal goals, yeah. right? But if you... If you're orientated around one, you can generally facilitate the other ones. Yes. And you know, like Greta's goal at the moment is probably to get something to eat. That's why she's. Oh, that's why yeah. she's. An, that's why she's annoying me now. You know, isn't that right, Greta? <laughs> hey. But in reality, I just I want to say to you. First of all, thanks very much. It's this been inspiring. I'm still always impressed after we speak. And great Thank to have you. you. Thank thanks you very much. much. Good on you, Thank you. folks. Um, thanks very much for watching. I want to. Uh, Thank Konbutianis very much for coming over and spending some time with us today. We'll certainly have a chat with him again in the future. Our intent is to bring people that have done well in life, not just financially, as I said in my very first video, it's not about money, it's about people that succeed, whether they succeed with family, whether they succeed in business, even if they succeed financially. We're going to introduce a few people here and there that I think can bring some value and bring some worth to this YouTube channel. So again, thank you very much for listening. God bless, stay safe.